Okay, this video here is um, to support students uh, studying Bogland. By no means is it by no means is it a definitive analysis. It's a starting point for you to dig a bit deeper into the poem. Now, just by way of starting point, it's useful just to look at the poem as a whole and look at its overall structure. So what we have here are four line stanzas, and there are seven of them. Uh, it's useful to consider um, to consider that, so that way you can look at transitions and shifts that happen between stanzas, if nothing else. Now, as a starting point, also let's look at the dedication for T.P. Flanagan. T.P. Flanagan was a friend of Seamus Heaney's, and he was an artist well known for painting Irish landscapes. The, the bringing of these together is significant because we have in this poem uh, high, uh, Heaney making the Irish landscape his poetic territory. And so in the first stanza, we have no prairies to slice a big sun at evening. Everywhere the eye concedes to encroaching horizon is wooed into the cyclops' eye of a time. I've gone into the second stanza there. But um, this opening here is invoking the American landscape. Prairies are a North American phenomenon. Um, and this idea in America of exploration being about going west and heading westwards, an expansionist view of exploration is contrasted in his poem with Irish exploration being archaeological, being uh, about digging deeper. The interesting uh, transition here of everywhere the eye concedes to encroaching horizon is wooed into the cyclops' eye of a tarn. A tarn is um, a small lake that's on top of a hill, and so uh, it has this impression of like the cyclops' eye, the, the single eye of a cyclops, and drawing in everything around it. And it's worth. And so, coming back to this poem as a whole and looking at it, um, and looking at it in its entirety, it's important to look at the the imagery, the the bog imagery that we see here. It's important to consider it as a contrast to the American landscape, and to think of the Irish bog landscape as the poetic landscape, the poetic territory that Heaney works in. And so, we can bring this poem back to uh, his earlier poem, Digging, in terms of. Uh, he clearly articulates that his mission as a poet is to dig um, between my finger, my, my finger and my thumb, the squat pen rests. I'll dig with it, he concludes. And then we can carry this poem forward to look at it as a tipping point that would kind of, is as a prelude, I guess, to the bog poems such as Tolan Man and Punishment. And so the bogs themselves become this metaphorical poetic space that Heaney relishes in and revels in, and one that creates this uniquely Irish voice that has become so popular. But also the language overall is, um, is uh, I won't say, I'll say deceptively simple. He uses common language in poetic ways. He doesn't, uh, if you were to read, contrast this with um, T.S. Eliot or even Yeats, there's a clear difference in style here. And so, in conclusion, what you should take from this is to take some of the ideas that I've, that I've given you to point to those issue, uh, ideas about the persona, the we, um, to look at the imagery and the bogs, and to do some more reading and to, uh, to flesh out your understanding of this poem. To look a bit more closely at that. Our unfenced country is bog that keeps crusting between sights of the sun. This, um, the, the bringing together of the American landscape is significant here. Our unfenced country, I think, is a very American image, yet is bog that keeps crusting between sights of the sun. Heaney acknowledges the Irish, the Irish landscape, the bog is, is that characteristic of the Irish landscape, and he relishes in it. He doesn't run away from it. For years, perhaps, the bogs of Ireland were used pejoratively um, to, uh, to, to keep the Irish down, if you will, to this notion of bog Irish. Uh, Heaney ennobles the bogs and makes them part of uh, the Irish culture, but also becomes the source of their past in connection with the past. They've taken the skeleton of the great Irish elk out of the peat, set it up, an astounding crate full of air. This crate full of air is, is the skeleton itself, the rib cage of the skeleton. It's worth going online to have a look at this because this great Irish elk is in a museum in Ireland. Um, and so here we've got this sense of archaeology here. 
So we've moved from the uh, American sense of the prairies and exploration moving out to this Irish sense of digging downwards um, t- uh, for the past and the history. So uh, Heaney is therefore using his poetry archaeologically in the metaphorical sense. This metaphor of archaeology continues here. Butter, un- uh, butter sunk under more than a hundred years was recovered salty and white. The ground itself is kind black butter. So the literal stuff going on here is this recovery of hundred-year-old butter that is still intact because Pete uh, acts to preserve whatever gets drawn into it. Uh, and this would become more uh, relevant when we look at uh, Heaney's bog poems such as Tollen Man and Punishment. Um, that the recovery of bog bodies perfectly preserved uh, under the under the bogs becomes a source of inspiration for him. But here we have the ground itself is kind, black butter. So returning to that image of the cyclops eye drawing everything in, it's it's, it's a preserving, it's a, almost a maternal image, I guess, of, of, of the peat here. It's kind, it, it uh, looks after what goes into it. And it's melting and opening underfoot, missing its last definition by millions of years. They'll never dig coal here. This last definition, when I first read it, confused me. And I think it's simply, the last definition is coal. Peat is, um, is part of that process where organic matter, if left for millions of more years, would become coal. But they'll never dig coal here. That this land is, is old, yet it's still not reached that final definition. Only the waterlogged trunks of great firs, soft as pulp. Our pioneers keep striking inwards and downwards. This hour is significant. Um, just to return briefly to the to the beginning, that first word "we." Uh, Heaney, in his interviews uh, in the book Stepping Stones, acknowledges that in "Door into the Dark" was when he introduced this word "we" into his poetry. In Death of a Naturalist, there was a clear persona, an I in the poem, and it was a very autobiographical I, such as in Digging. Um, And here we have Heaney becoming more of a public poet, uh, writing about the experiences of Ireland. So we have no prairies, meaning all of uh, the Irish. And in this uh, interview, he acknowledges, he says, um, when I made the remark about changing from I, I was thinking of poems like Requiem for the Croppies and Bogland. And obviously the vantage point from which they were written was that of a Northern Irish Catholic with a nationalist background. And so Heaney's very clear about the persona and the background, the context that he brings to his poetry. He doesn't shy away from that, even though we see in his later poetry this um, reticence to overt political speech. And so coming back to this stanza, our pioneers, uh, this hour as opposed to the American pioneers who went westwards through the prairies, our pioneers keep striking inwards and downwards. So Ireland's exploration is inwards, it's archaeological. Every layer they stripped seems camped on before. The bog holes might be Atlantic seepage. The wet centre is bottomless. So this every layer uh, seems camped on before. This is that reminder that Irish history is one of uh, many ages. And so this digging archaeologically into the peat uh, and fleshes out and brings back that history. And that ties into what Heaney's work as a poet is, is to strip away these layers, to dig into the past and, and draw an Irish past to help explain its, its present. And the bog holes might be Atlantic seepage. The wet centre is bottomless. The interesting thing about this bottomless uh, image at the end, it's not a threatening one. I think this word bottomless suggests that you can keep digging and you'll keep discovering more and more, that this exploration can be ongoing forever. 